Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to test and replace a mass airflow sensor on a BMW M62. As always, if you're not a subscriber, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. This particular car I'm working with here today is a 1997 BMW 540i equipped with a non-Vanus. This exact engine can be found on the BMW E31 and E38 models as well. Bosch has provided me with the parts in order to do the replacement and produce the video for everyone. The mass airflow sensor is located after the airbox in the intake tube. This is a four wire system which uses an electronically heated metal film to measure the amount of air passing through the intake. If the metal film becomes baked up with dirt or eventually fatigues over time, it will provide false readings to the engine which affects the air fuel ratio. This will lead to hard starts, stumbling at idle or throughout the RPM range, poor performance, poor fuel economy, hesitations and perhaps engine stalling. There is a couple different ways we can test for a faulty mass airflow sensor, one being with an OBD2 code reader which is able to monitor the sensor's values and the other is using a multimeter. First, starting with the OBD2 code reader, you will need one which is able to provide live data when the engine is running. If you're new to using an OBD2 code reader, I do have an in-depth video for this which you can check out. A link will be provided to the video in the description below. Plug the scanner into the OBD2 diagnostic port and go through the options. First, we are looking for calculated load value. Calculated load value takes measurements from a few different sensors such as the engine temperature, air temperature, throttle position sensor, and of course the mass airflow sensor. Values may vary if the vehicle is in park or being driven. We are looking at 2.7% at idle. This should be a low value and then it will increase once the engine RPM is increased. At wide open throttle, it should achieve about 100% but it's not necessarily needed to go that far. Once the engine is at full operating temperature, I took the RPM up to about 3000 to 3500 RPM for testing purposes throughout the video. You should notice a smooth linear increase when increasing the throttle, no spikes or flat spots. When the car is parked at 2500 RPM, I had a reading of 14%. Now for taking a reading directly from the mass airflow sensor, Again, viewing live data displayed in grams per second or G slash S. This is a measurement of airflow in the intake. At idle, my reading is about 4.9 grams per second. At 2500 RPM, the reading was 24 grams per second. Keep in mind these values are based on the brand new mass airflow sensor, not the old sensor. I have been looking for values online. Some people have listed their values for the S62 and M50 engines from what I've found, but based on their own car and it's most likely an older sensor they're testing. I haven't been able to find a factory BMW specific value. Next is testing with the multimeter, turn the ignition to the on but not the run position. We must have the electronics powered up in the vehicle as if the engine were running but the engine is off. Again, I'm using a new sensor for this test to see how it performs to have an accurate base for when testing your sensor. First, we must test to ensure there is a sufficient ground and power at the plug. This is done by selecting the 20 volt DC setting on your multimeter, taking the negative probe, insert it into the brown wires pin. Now taking the positive probe, insert that into the red with a blue stripe wires pin. The connector should be providing current battery voltage when the ignition is on, so the reading of 12.04 volts is good. We know we have both a ground and power source. If the reading is low or non-existent, you will need to take the reading at only the red with blue stripe wire with a generic ground to ensure that the wire is functional. And then using the ground with a known 12 volt power supply in the vehicle. For low or non-existent reading, you may have a corroded connector, faulty connector, or broken wire. Now for back probing the connector with the engine running. This will allow us to view a live reading, similar type of idea as when the OBD2 scanner was used. In order to back probe the connector, use a doll needle, paper clip, extremely small nail, staple, or something that you can push alongside the wire casing 
and weatherproof sealed directly to the terminal inside the plastic connector. Do not pierce the insulation of the wire. This can cause future issues and jeopardize the integrity of the harness. We are inserting the needles in the two remaining wires which haven't been tested. One is a signal in and the other is a signal out to the engine's management system. So the wires we are testing is the gray with yellow stripe and the other is the gray with blue stripe. Using jumper wires, don't cross the two contacts. These will be connected to the multimeter. Using the same setting as before on the multimeter, if the value is negative, simply reverse the probes. It's only changing the polarity, but doesn't affect the accuracy of the reading. The value will change based on the engine's RPM. The sensor uses a 5 volt supply at idle. The lowest reading was about 0.88 volts. And as the engine increases, so does the value. If the reading is excessively high at idle, then there is a fault with the sensor. If the reading is lower, again there might be a fault with the sensor, the air filter is dirty, or the intake track might be plugged with debris. I didn't take the car to redline, but at 3500 RPM the reading is 1.99 volts. If you are noticing any flat spots, not smooth linear increase, or the value won't increase, then there is a fault with the mass airflow sensor. At redline, the sensor should go out to a full 5 volts. You can also do a test by probing only the gray wire with yellow stripe, then grounding out the other probe. I use the strut brace bolt as a point, and as you can see, we can still achieve the same accurate readings. Now for replacement, it's quite easy with minimal tools required. Start by loosening the gear clamp on the intake tube. A standard screwdriver or socket can be used. Once loose, pull it back. Simply disconnect the electrical connector, which will twist counterclockwise until it stops. Then pull it off, tuck it off to the side so it doesn't catch up on anything. You can remove the airbox if you wish, but it isn't really needed. Remove the two snap clips. There will be one on the bottom and then another on the top. Then pull it back from the airbox and lift out. Compare the old and new sensor to ensure they are the same type and style. Part numbers will be printed on the side with a raised plastic lettering. And there will be a flow arrow to show the assembly's orientation. As mentioned earlier, Bosch has kindly provided me with a new mass airflow sensor in order to produce this tutorial. BMW does use a Bosch sensor from factory on this particular car. It's important to only use a Bosch sensor as this will ensure you have a high quality part which has a long life and doesn't jeopardize the engine's performance. Ensure the intake connections are clean and install the new sensor in reverse of removal. Ensure the clamps are back in their location and tight. Install the electrical connector and you're done. New videos are released every Monday and Friday. Be sure to stay up to date with my latest video by hitting that notification bell on my channel homepage. Don't forget to leave a comment below letting me know what you think of my tutorial and thank you for watching.